Hello friends, welcome back to Aunt Debbie's Boutique. Today we're going to make a quilt of valor. If you're not familiar with quilts of valor, they are given to veterans who served our country. And there is an organization called Quilts of Valor that uh, has presentation ceremonies. They collect the quilts. Uh, and set up the uh, ceremonies and give them to veterans, uh, any veteran, actually. Uh, they don't have to have been some sort of hero or anything like that, just anybody that served. And I believe they take any and all nominations for uh, veterans that uh, could benefit from a quilt like this. And uh, they also take donations of quilts. Now they do have some guidelines uh, for their quilts if you donate them and they have to fall within these specifications. Um, the recommended size is 60 inches by 80 inches. There's a minimum of 55 inches by 65 inches and a maximum of 72 inches by 90 inches. So you have to keep your quilt within that size. They have to be machine or hand quilted. Now they've relaxed these uh, guidelines because at one point uh, they required they be long arm quilted. But uh, I guess they have seen the uh, value in any sort of machine quilting and especially hand quilting. That really is a labor of love. Um, you, you're to use 100% cotton quilt quality fabrics. Um, and the, if you submit it to them to be quilted. Now, I believe some groups of them will do the quilting for you if you just submit the top and the back. And we have a local group that has started up here that, as I understand it, that's the case. And that's where this one is going to go. We're just going to make the top and we're going to let them quilt it, but we're going to provide the back. So if you do that, the backing has to be at least eight inches wider and eight inches longer. So that will give a four inch extra around the quilt. If you quilt it yourself or have it quilted, they want you to use quality low loft batting, such as cotton and cotton blends. Uh, as for the binding, they want what's called a French fold or a double fold. Um, that's the kind of binding we do on everything where you uh, take it like a two and a half inch strip and fold it in half, sew it on one side and bring it over to the other. They want that hand stitched the, the second side of it, hand stitched or very neatly machine stitched. And they need a label on them. And the label must say Quilt of Valor on it. And now I'm going to tell you what other information needs to be on it. But obviously if you're donating this to an organization and you don't know who's going to receive it, you can't fill in all the blanks. So they'll have to fill in some of them. But it wants to know the recipients, the piecer, who pieced it or put it together, the quilter, who did the uh, quilting on it, and the binder, if there's a, a third person that does the binding. The city and state of residence. Now, this is optional. And I'm not sure if that's, I imagine it's the city and state where it was made. It could be of the recipient, though. Uh, and the date and the location of the award, well, you won't know that. That's something they'll have to fill in. And uh, the washing instructions is optional, but it's nice to have that. And they say no religious or political messages can be embedded anywhere in the quilt. They want you to wash the quilt one time uh, after it's all made. And then there's optionally, you can uh, 
have a, a pillowcase that it a matching pillowcase that you presented in. Uh, you can have a thank you note to the recipient for their service. And you can include a journal of how the quilt was made or the maker's thoughts or anything like that. So all that is optional, but that would be nice for the recipient to know that what love went into that quilt. Now, all this being said, there is nothing to keep you from making your own quilt the, own, the way you want it without any guidelines and giving it to a veteran as a quilt of valor. But if you want to go through the official organization, which is a nice thing to do because they have a ceremony when they, when they give it to them. And, and it, uh, I just think it uh, gives them a sense of pride the recipient. So you need to uh, find a, either a local group that does Quilts of Valor or you can contact the main organization and they will put you in touch with where to send the quilt. All right, the one we're going to do is going to be very simple. So even a beginner can make this quilt. And um, what it's going to be is this is one block. We don't have to do anything to this. It's the block. And it's going to be every other block on our quilt. Then, let me grab something over here. Here's going to be our second block. I guess I should move all of this so we can... So they're going to be alternated like this, and they're going to have a sashing. Now, as is usual for me, I uh, bought the fa some fabric that is um, directional. And so I wanted it all to read properly. So I cut some strips up and down. I cut some across. However, I needed them cut. So let's see. Here's the strips that would go between them because they're cut the right direction. I should turn all this around so it makes sense to you, not to me. And then we're going to have uh, in between the rows, we're going to have the sashing there. And the outside border is going, this is three inches. I could cut it back to two and still be within the specification. So I haven't decided that completely. I'll look when it's all laid out. And then we're gonna have a five inch border around the outside edge. And then this is the fabric that I'm going to put on the back. Okay, now, this actually is a project that I inherited from my mom. Uh, she's an avid quilter. She's a much better quilter than I am because she's done it for so many years. But uh, she's almost 90, and she likes to do things like pot holders these days. So she started this several years ago and never finished it, and she gave it to me and asked me to finish it since they just started this new, I guess you call it a chapter, but a new group of Quilt of Valor here in Midland, Texas. So... Uh, I, I took it and it's interesting how different quilters do different things. She had a few blocks cut out. She had a few blocks partially sewn. She didn't have any blocks sewn together. I sewed this one together. But she had it in various stages. So uh, that's just the way she works. She cuts out a little and she sews a little. I, on the other hand, want everything cut out. I want it all organized and I want a game plan of how I'm gonna put it together the most efficient way. So that's what I'm showing you here. Not only how to make the block, but how to make the whole quilt. So uh, if you are one of these people that just wants to see how the block is made, I'm going to assume you can figure that out. If I can make 10 blocks all at one time, I'm assuming you know you can figure out how to make just one block 
So uh, you are certainly free to make one block at a time. If that's what makes you comfortable, so be it. But one of the things I like to teach is not just how to make the block, but how to make the entire quilt and how to do it in an efficient manner. So that's what we're going to do today. Okay, I'm gonna lay this aside. Oh, I should tell you the fabric um, that you need. For, okay, I've got two different sizes here. But for the white fabric, you're gonna need one and a quarter yards. And this has a little, I don't know if you can see, it's almost like a little, looks like a 4th of July looking starburst thing on it's a white on white. And of the blue stars, you need 5 eighths of a yard. Of the stripes, you need about a yard and an eighth. For the border, uh, all of the borders, two and a half yards. And let's see, what did I forget? Oh, the back, I got five yards. Uh, and I think that's the right amount. I mean, I know it's enough. I just, I may have overbought. We'll see when I get to that point. But we're going to make 10 of the striped blocks. So all we had to do is cut those out. Those blocks are done. And 10 of these star blocks. And then put it all together. Um, so you will need to cut out, obviously, 10 of the striped blocks, which are uh, 12 and a half by 12 and a half. Then we need Let's see, these are the big ones. Of five, these are five inch blocks and we need 20 white and 20 uh, blue with the stars, okay? Those we are gonna make half star triangles, which are going to be these four blocks. That's the only piece we have to make before we start putting the blocks together. And then you need 10 four and a half inch of the blue stars. That's for the middle. All of these end up being four and a half inch after we sew those together and trim them down. So we need 10 of those and 40 whites. Now, my mom was planning on making it a little bit smaller. I think she was gonna do, I'm doing four blocks by five rows. She was doing three by four but I don't think she realized that was not going to be big enough for the, it, that did not meet the minimum requirements. And so I increased it to four by five, but that made me almost run out of fabric. And two of the white four and a half inch blocks, I had to piece together here. I had to put a seam and you can see the seam is right there on this one. So two of them are gonna be pieced. I'll probably put them in the, the corners or something like that. But that was the only way I could, uh, could make it work. I don't think anybody will notice that or will care. Now, the first thing we want to do is sew our hot half square triangles. I have a stack of them already done because like I said, my mom had done some of these. These have been sewn and trimmed, so we don't have to do all of them. And I have gone through on the back of all these white pieces and I have drawn a line with, I use an erasable pen, a heat erasable pen, and drawn a line on the back of each one of the white pieces. Then we're gonna take them right sides together and we're gonna stitch a quarter inch down this side and a quarter inch down that side and then cut down the middle. And uh, this, all seams need to be accurate, of course, but th these I feel like need to be 
uh, as straight as possible. Now, we do have a little wiggle room because we're going to trim them down, but we're just trimming them down a hair, so we don't have much wiggle room. So uh, we want them all to come out the right size so our final block is right. So I'm going to take these over to the sewing machine, and I will sew down one side, all of them, chain them together. Then I'll come back and I'll show down the other side. So if you don't want to watch me do that, just fast forward through to the next step. But uh, I'm going to sew these real quickly. Okay, I'm going to use a leader and an ender on these blocks. This is something I should do all the time, but don't always. But by doing that, when I start and I'll sew through it, it gives me a running start. And sometimes the first couple of stitches on my machine don't stitch. Uh, and this way, by the time I get to the block, it is stitching good. And I don't have to back stitch then. And I'm setting my uh, stitch length on two. And um, you can go as low as one and a half. But if you have um, a stitch length that is one and a half to two, uh, it won't come out very easily, and therefore you don't have to back stitch. Now let's cut these apart, and since they're all exactly alike, we don't have to worry about any order. Now we need to cut right down the middle on that red line. You can use it. I mean, you can use your scissors if you want. I just think it's a little faster and a little neater if I use my blade. And it doesn't have to be perfectly on that line because this is just the selvage, uh, the inside selvage. Nobody's gonna see how perfect your cut is. Now I want to iron them open, and I'm going to iron towards the dark side. So I want to put the dark side on top. I'm sorry, first we want to set our seam, and then iron it open like that. Set our seam. Iron it open. Now at this point, it helps if you have a four and a half inch square to trim these up. But if you have a bigger square,
they usually have lines like this has a 45 degree line here that you can use to line up your blocks but what you want to do is put a corner on this and a corner on this and you can slide it any direction you want but you want the corners right on your seam So you can trim off the excess. Well, I'm having trouble getting that lined up a little bit. Uh, do as I say, not as I do. You don't want to cut towards yourself there. That was not a good move. Okay. I'm going to trim up the rest of these. I'm going to use... This, even though it, it doesn't work real good, it doesn't rotate real good. That way I won't have to move my ruler every time. Those are all trimmed. Obviously, I need to change my blade. It was not working real good. And this does not work very well, or not the way it intended. It just kind of sits on this little thing, and it, it doesn't work. If you have one that actually turns properly a different brand, please let me know, because I've bought two, and neither one have worked like they're supposed to. I've seen where people uh, actually mounted them on turntables and they work better, so I may have to do that. Okay, now, we that was the hard part. We've got all our sub blocks done. It's just a matter of putting our blocks together. So we're gonna have a stack of, let's see, yeah. I'm gonna have to divide these into 10, Block piles, one, two, three. Now then, I want to take 10 of each of these. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take this pile of blocks over to the machine and sew all them together. Then I'm going to sew all these together and sew all these together. Then I'll come back and add 
this to this row, this to this row, this to this row, and I'll show you how we iron it. Okay, let's get started. Now that I've sewn each of the rows together, I need to sew the rows to each other. I went ahead and clipped them and ironed them off camera, but I did want to explain to you how I ironed the back. Whenever you have a choice, and we don't always have a choice of which way to iron, sometimes we have to iron something uh, one direction just so it will fit with the next piece. But in this instance, it really didn't matter uh, whether you are, I mean, it did matter because we're going to line them up, but we had several different options. I guess that's a better way of putting it. But when you have the choice, the best option to choose is the path of least resistance, which in this case would be ironing the seams, excuse me, towards the square blocks that have no other seams in them. Because if you were to iron it this way, there, you'd get a lot of bulk where it hits the seam and uh, and it doesn't want to lay as smooth. So when you have the option, uh, pick the path of least, re, uh, least resistance. So on this row, I ironed away from the center towards these plain blocks. Then on this row, I ironed, that didn't stay down too good, I ironed towards the plain block which was in the center. Now that's going to make my seams nest when I go to put it together. So this one, the seam is ironed that way. This one, the seam is ironed this way. So I knew I had to do them opposite of each other. And so picking to, uh, to iron towards the plain block worked perfectly because I have plain blocks here, plain block here, then plain bo blocks here. So on this one again I ironed towards those. Now they'll nest together perfectly. But I must admit when I made this practice one I had to rip out a couple of points where it all came together. It's very uh, that's, I, I would say, the hardest part of this pan, uh, pattern is making sure everything comes together in these four corners. You can see this one's not perfect. It's off just a hair. But uh, as the saying is, it'll never be, be seen on a galloping horse. So I'm going to take these over to the sewing machine, and I am going to first sew all of these blocks to this, 
and then I'll come back and sew the bottom ones to the two pieces I already have. Um, I hope you were able to follow me when I stitched each row together where I stitched these, all of these in this pile, all of these, all of these. Then I came back to the top and added this, this, and this to them. And that whole process took me under 20 minutes. So this is a very fast quilt to make. We, we may spend another uh, 10 minutes sewing this together, maybe not even that long, and then it'll be time to lay it out and put it all together. So uh, if you want a fast quilt, this is, this is your guy. Okay, let's sew these rows together. Now I'm gonna try to be extra careful when I put these together to make sure that they line up perfectly or as perfectly as I can get them so I don't have to rip too much out. We'll see. I've finished sewing my rows together and I have gone in and cut them apart and pressed them. I did have to go back and fix a few places, but for the most part, they're pretty close. When a white star falls right there, it's kind of hard to see, but okay, that one's off ever so slightly. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, I fixed as good as I could the ones that I caught that were off. Now. It's not just that you have to match the seams going this way and this way. You also have this diagonal seam coming in that you're trying to fix. Sometimes it's as simple as making a little bit wider seam or a little bit narrower seam so that the intersections all come together. And I should have mentioned this beforehand and should have paid attention myself. But it's a good idea when you're stitching to have the block on top that has um, the diagonal seam so you can see where to cross it. You'll see uh, it coming across and that helps you too. And I, I just failed to mention that and I failed to do it. I wasn't thinking. So um, I'm pleased with what I have out. So now we have 10 stars and 10 uh, stripes, and we've got some sashing. So let's go look at laying it out and see what it looks like. Here's the basic block layout. My table's not big enough to lay the whole thing out at once, uh, but it will condense a little bit as I put the seams in it. So uh, I like the way it looks and it will have a five inch border all the way around. I did lay, let me see, is that? 
we turn it up a little. I laid the border at the top there. I mean, it's the same same uh, print, but uh, it will lay there at the top. So, uh, and at the bottom and on the sides. I'm going to take it over to the sewing machine now and start sewing it together. Uh, I will sew each row together because the sashing is cut 12 and a half inches the size of the block. So I will sew each row together and I will then come back and put the uh, sashing this direction. So you can watch it go together. Well, the quilt top is all put together. Uh, this table's just not big enough to showcase it completely. And it needs a really good steam iron uh, on it, which I will do. And I will piece the back together and then send it off to the local organization to quilt it and find a recipient for it. So I hope you've enjoyed this and learned something from it. If you have, please like, subscribe, share, comment, whatever you can do helps me a great deal. And I appreciate each and every one of you. Before I close out for the day, I would like to say a prayer of blessing over this quilt and for the recipient of it. Father God, I just thank you for the person that is going to be receiving this quilt. Thank you that they were willing to risk their life for the sake of our country. Let us as a country never forget what they've done. I ask you to bless this person and to give uh, provide them with all their needs from here on out. We just ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, remember, whatever you do, do it to the glory of the Lord. Thank you.